Come on with a loud voice. We'll give him thankful that you have the name that is above every other name. Jesus, your name is above fear and anxiety. Your name is above sin and shame. Your name is above sickness and disease. There's no greater name than the name of Jesus. Something about that name. Something about that name. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus.
Your name. 
gentle love of God. Young and old alike will hear about your faithful, steadfast love. It's never failing. Here's my chorus. Your mercy grows through the ages. Your faithfulness is firm, rising up to the skies. Can you hear it? Heaven is filled with your praises, O Lord. All the holy ones are praising you for your miracles. The sons of God are all praising you for your mighty wonders. We could search the skies forever 
and never find one like you. All the mighty angels could not be compared to you. So awesome are you, O oh Yahweh, Lord God of angel armies. Where could we find anyone as glorious as you? Your faithfulness shines all around you. All the heavens and everything on earth belong to you. For you are the creator of all that is seen and unseen. The four corners of the earth were put in place by you. You made the majestic mountains that are still shouting their praises to your name. Breathtaking and awesome is your power. Astounding and unbelievable is your might and strength when it goes on display. Your glorious throne rests on a foundation of righteousness and just verdicts. Grace and truth are the attendants who go before you. O oh Lord, how blessed are the people who know the triumphant shout, for they walk in the radiance of your presence. We can do nothing but leap for joy all day long, for we know who you are and what you do, and you've exalted us on high. Thank you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. sing growing up and it just simply says nobody fills my heart like you do Jesus and what's more is nobody heals our hearts like he does there's nobody and nothing that can give us a new heart like he does but he says that he takes our heart of stone and he gives us a heart of flesh it's the reason he came 
the reason that he put on flesh so that we could have access to the Father, so that we could have tender hearts before him. There's no one like him. Just his name on our lips. There's no other name. There is none like you. is so faithful to worship you guys sound so beautiful I just I want to say just on behalf of Christina and I it is such an honor and such a privilege to just worship with you guys and I love it when you begin to sing out and we can take a step back and all we can hear is the voices of our body it's just such a pleasure and it's just such a joy to be in this place when all we are doing are just pouring out our praises and our devotion to the Lord. And so I just want to encourage you as you as you sing and as you come in here on Sunday mornings to worship. I love it when you sing loud and I love it when you sing your own song and I love it when you shout. And I love it when you respond to God. I love it when you respond in His presence. It's just, it's just such a holy moment. And I know that if Christina and I are up here and we take pleasure in just hearing this family lift up their praise, if we like it, then we know that he likes it. We know that he takes pleasure in it. We know that he lives and he dwells in your song. The Lord lives and he dwells in your song. And so my heart is so encouraged this morning. Lynn, go ahead, come on. I just want us to continue in that vein with heads bowed, eyes closed as the Holy Spirit moves. And when you think about no other name, the power and authority that rests in the name of Jesus. I'm reminded right before Jesus was taken by the soldiers from the garden, they approached him. And he said, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus. And he said, I am he. And just the power of those three words, it blew them down. That's the Lord that lives and reigns inside of us. That gives us the power to speak to that mountain and say, you got to get up and you got to move over there. And so, Holy Spirit, forgive us where we have thought and, and, and our faith has been so small when you have provided so much for us because you and you alone are all that we need. You and you alone are all that we need to reach out to and say, God, you already know what I'm walking through. You already know the struggles or the challenges that are before us. But we're going to walk through them with you and see you honored and glorified and see you work in ways that the world would say there's no way. But God, you says, oh, yeah, there is a way because I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Father, prepare our hearts this morning to receive your word, to continue. That worship just doesn't end because we've stopped singing. 
we have been entered into your presence. And now, Holy Spirit, we ask for you to have the freedom to speak to every single heart in this room. Exactly and specifically the way you desire for them to hear your word, your message of love and hope. It's ours for the taking. You've offered it to us. You've given us your word, presence of Holy Spirit. Now let's step into it and walk in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Wow. Well, don't you love the the crispness? I get that word out. Of a cool morning. Did anybody have a little frost on their windshield this morning? All right. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm so ready for the seasons to change and for the cooler weather to come in. But there's something about the change of the seasons that just reminds us God's in control. Man couldn't figure it out. He couldn't have figured out how to make it go from fall to winter to spring to summer and continue to cycle that way. That's all the work of a sovereign God. Well, as we come closer and closer to the close of this year, just a couple of more weeks, and we will enter in, if Jesus doesn't come back, we'll enter into 2022. And so often we can find ourselves looking so far ahead. Man, I can't wait to get, I'm ready for 2021 to be done and to move out of here. But there's still things God wants to do and speak into your life in these remaining days, in this specific day. And so I just pray that you'll have a heart that's receptive this morning. A couple of things I want to remind you of. Our spirit of Christmas, all of those gifts, all 47 folks who signed up for that, those are due today. And I know probably no one forgot that, you know. But if you did, do your best, get it into us later on or no later than tomorrow because we're going to be gathering those up and delivering those to the ministry that will take and disperse all of those gifts. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for going over and above to make sure someone's life is blessed. When you do that, you can't outgive God. And God says, I tell you what, I love that in you. Watch what I do in you and for you. But the spirit of Christmas also couple of other things we've got going on. Make sure I don't forget this. Discover TCAP. We talked, I mentioned this last week, but we are kind of shifting what used to be membership, and we're calling it Discover TCAP, and for those who are called to come into alignment with what we believe is our core values and the mission and purpose and vision of this this fellowship called the Church at Benbrook. We're going to be right after worship. We're going to have lunch provided. And we're going to go through about 45 minutes of just walking through, clarifying some things. And it's a great opportunity if someone wanted to ask questions or wanted to find out a little bit more about the church at Benbrook. This is your opportunity. And then Christmas Eve, you probably saw that, our Christmas Eve service on the 24th at 5 p.m. We'd love for you to be here for that. We'll celebrate together and let you get back home to be with family and friends. And then on the 26th, we'll have church as normal, and we'll just celebrate all that God has been doing and will continue to do. The T-shirts are available. One more time, you can sign up and get those. It's a little baseball-looking T-shirt, and that'll be in the foyer after the worship time. Well, I want to pray for us because it's offering time, all right? And so we get to give back to the Lord. And so, Father, right now, bless the gifts, the offerings, the tithes, that will come in to this storehouse called the church at Benbrook. Bless those that give out of obedience. And we just thank you, God, for the privilege we have to be stewards of what you have entrusted in our care. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. There are buckets on the left side. We're going to pass those across. Our ushers will gather those up. There's also offering boxes by the doors as you go out and some out in the foyer if the bucket gets by you. And if you're a first-time guest, thank you for being here. There's an information card in the seat back in front of you. If you'll fill that out, bring it to our welcome desk at the conclusion of our service.
we've got a special gift for you just to say thank you for being with us. Amen. Hey, how y'all doing? Am I forgetting something? Kids go? All right. All of our kids are going with Miss Sarah and Miss Erica back there. I'm so used to the Sunday after Life Walk Weekend. Yeah, I know it. So anyway. Uh, and we didn't have Life Walk Weekend. But kids, y'all go with Miss Sarah to the kids' worship area. You'll have a great time. For the rest of us, go ahead and stand to your feet. We're going to read the scripture and begin to walk through our message. Got one verse I want to read over us and then pray as we prepare for this morning's message. And it's out of Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This is what the Word of God says. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Father, thank you that your word reminds us that it has been given to us to remember, to meditate on, to think about, to read so that even during our sleep, God, you speak to us. Holy Spirit moves within us. And as we walk throughout the day, your word resonates as it, as it leads and guides our steps through the journey of that day that you set forth. But your word promises that if we will do everything you've written, that you put in the word in directing us to live out, we'll be prosperous and successful. We can't fail. That's exactly what this is, Father. We will not fail if we walk right where you have instructed us to walk. Sometimes that walk is challenging. Sometimes that walk looks like, man, I have no idea where this is heading, but you do. That's why we hold on to your hand and we walk with you, not run ahead of you. And so, Lord, just bless your word. Bless our time this morning in the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. This morning is going to be the final message in our Back to the Basics. And we've kind of dropped out of it at time from time to time in some special focused messages. But I saved this message to the very last. And some of you all are going to look at this message and when you begin to hear where we're going, you're going to go, man, why did you save that message for right before Christmas? All right? But I want to share with you about stewardship. And some of you might be going, oh, my gosh, he's going to hit us about money. He's going to wear us out so that I can't go buy all the kids what I wanted to get. No, absolutely not. In the scripture, especially the gospels, money or possessions are mentioned 288 times. That's one out of ten verses in the four gospels. From the entire Bible, from beginning to end, Prayer is mentioned about 500 times. Money and possessions are mentioned over 2,000 times. Because God knew that if there's anything that the world would use, that the enemy of this world would use, that he would use possessions and things to direct our hearts away from him. And as I was sitting here and we were worshiping, it was like the Lord said, you know, There's going to be some folks in this room that they've been wounded, they've been hurt, because they've sat under teaching or preaching that sometimes somebody literally wore them out and almost sought to manipulate or make them feel guilty because you're not doing this, you didn't give here, you didn't do that. And for that, I want to say as a pastor, whether you've ever received, you may not have received someone sitting down with you and saying, man, I'm sorry I may have come across this way to you. 
But as a pastor, I want to stand on the behalf of anyone that may have spoken words that didn't encourage you in the area of stewardship, which stewardship is just basically managing what God has blessed us with. But where maybe you walked out instead of going, wow, now I understand you walked out like this, beaten down and feeling like you were made to be below normal because, well, I can't give like somebody else or I, I didn't do this or I didn't do that. And so I want to repent on the behalf of those pastors because let me just tell you, I've served under pastors like that. And I'm sorry. Yes. And so I just, I just want to pray for you right now and pray a prayer of repentance before you if you've been wounded. God, I pray for those that may have carried some deep wounds. And maybe it's been a long time ago and it's one of those things where, oh, I've forgotten about that. But the reality is, is if we don't address it and deal with it, it'll resurface. And so I stand in the place of maybe a pastor or, or an evangelist or someone, maybe a mentor that might have come across to someone and instead of them being encouraged to understand what the blessing of stewarding, what God you've given us, really is, they were discouraged. And they felt guilty. Maybe they even felt shamed. And God, I'm sorry that that took place. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would enter in and you would bring forth healing. And you would help them know that they are loved. If they're a son or a daughter, there is not anything that will separate them from your love. Because you love them unconditionally. And you have the best in store for them. And so, Father, I pray that you would, if there was any in here, even if it's one or whatever, or maybe it's someone that's listening, that they would be able to start in a fresh way and say, I'm laying that aside. I'm no longer going to carry that burden. I'm going to begin to walk in freedom. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stewardship, most of us would equate it and say, oh, you're going to talk about money. You're going to talk about possessions. You're going to talk about this or that, tithing and all of that. Let me just tell you, I believe the reason why this was the very last message in this whole series is because I believe it's one of the most critical messages. That we live in a world that is pulling us. And getting us to go, if I just have this, if I just go here, if I just accomplish this. All these different things when maybe the Lord is saying, now I just need you to chill for a while. And I need you to sit down and understand what the Word of God says. <laughs> this one pastor that we served under, I'll never forget it. We, we came into church and he started to preach his message. And he goes, I need to let you all know there was a robbery in the church last week. And the people are like, what? He goes, yeah, last Sunday we had a robbery in the church. And thousands of dollars were taken out of this church last Sunday. And people are like, man, I didn't hear that on the news. Why weren't we notified? What was it? And then he said, in fact, let me read you a scripture. I'm going to read this scripture to you. And then we'll move forward. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me, but you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings, you're under a curse. The whole nation of you, because you're robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me, or prove me. And this says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough to hold it. Now, the issue with that illustration that he gave was most people checked out after that illustration because they're still concerned. And he's going like, oh, that really didn't happen. What I was really saying is because some of you all didn't tithe or didn't do this, the money that should have been brought in went out that way. Let me just tell you this. I will never manipulate you. I will never badger you. I will never make you feel guilty or shamed whether you give a dollar or nothing. God does not need our money. But what he wants and what he's after is our obedience. 
And when we get obedient to him and we take him at his word, he says, see if I won't open up the windows of heaven. What that literally means is the floodgates of blessing will come so much you're going like, God, turn it off. I can't stand it anymore. I don't know about you. I want to get in that kind of situation. Lord, oh my gosh. Because when he does like that, he says, well, just go give some more away. You cannot outgive God. And when we think about the things of this world, what is one of the big drives of this world? If I can just attain to this level, if I can just have this, if I just had more money, if I had a bigger 401k, if I had this or that, whatever it might be. And I'm not anti-money. Folks, it takes money to operate what we do here. The ministries that we do, the staff that receive their salaries, those things. In a way, we're kind of like I had a guy say the other day. When somebody says the government comes out and says, we have a new government-funded program. He said, that's not true. The government doesn't make any money. What they're saying is we have a new taxpayer increased government program. And so when you think about what God does in and through this house, it's because of the faithfulness of the body of Christ. You know, we've heard every year, it doesn't matter. You'll, you'll see something will come up and they'll say, well, there's a bill before Congress to remove uh, the ability for people to take their giving, their tithes and offerings off of their taxes. That's something that happens every year. Somebody's always doing that. I believe that if God were to do that, it shouldn't dent one thing into the way the church functions. Because if I'm giving just so I can get a tax deduction, I need to step back and probably hang on to my money. Because there's nothing there in that regard. God wants me to serve out of obedience and be blessed to the point of what he desires. And so what I'm going to do this morning, and the title of the, the message is just let the word speak for itself. Yeah. I really don't have an outline. I'm just going to read the scripture and, and, uh, and speak to it and let the word of God speak to itself because the bottom line is I can't make you do anything. No one on the staff can make you do anything. Your spouse can't make you do anything. But what God desires is for the Holy Spirit to be able to move in a way to bless you and to take you to a point where you really begin to trust God. Because Debbie can attest to this. For years, the only reason I tithed was out of fear. I tithed because if I don't give, something bad might happen to my family. Or my car might break down. Or this might happen. Or this might happen. Guess what? That is a skewed view of who God is. That he's like, well, I'm telling you, if you don't give another five bucks, I'm going to wear you out this week. No, that's not who he is. It's all his anyway. We just get the privilege of honoring him in the way we steward. And, and steward means the way we manage it and take care of it. And the thing is, is every one of us has probably experienced times where we have really mismanaged what we had and what we'd been blessed with. But I... Praise God, the scripture says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so when we realize and our eyes are open to, oh man, the spirit of God bring conviction here, then confess it, agree with God, get filled and move on and seek not to enter into that arena again. So I want to read some passages of scripture to you that, and many of them are where Jesus is just talking about finances possessions in Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 and 21 through 21 do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where the thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also Paul also says in 2 Corinthians 9, every man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly, but as a cheerful giver. You sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow uh, generously, you reap generously. God's economics, so to speak, 
God's purpose is to see if I won't put me to the test. When you read that passage in Malachi chapter 3, he's speaking to his own children. You guys have robbed me. And what he's saying is, y'all have gotten so comfortable doing your own thing, you've forgotten about what should be the number one priority. I had a guy uh, ask a question once. He goes, well, if I tithe, do I tithe off the net or off the gross? And the answer that was given was, do you want a net blessing or a gross blessing? And so the thing is, is I don't know that it's necessarily either one in that it's an issue of the heart and God's saying, just obey me and walk with me and see if I won't. I love this passage of scripture out of Mark. Chapter 12, 41 through 44. Now Jesus sat down. Now this is pretty interesting. He's in church. And so you just envision this. He's at the temple, and he's sitting down across from where people are giving. It'd be like Jesus when we say it's offering time, and we start passing the buckets. It's like Jesus is sitting here, and he's watching every one of us as that bucket goes by. Not in condemnation, but he's just observing. And so the scripture says, Now, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put. And he watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. I heard one commentator say that where they put the money in and dropped their offerings in, it made a jingling sound. like You know, like, so the more they put in, the more attention people would go, oh, wow. They're loading up over there, you know. And so this says the rich people gave large amounts. But a poor widow came, and she put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Put in everything. Now, often, you know, oftentimes you'll hear Jesus saying, he'll, he'll say things like, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Well, does that mean when he was telling something before that he was lying? No. Oftentimes he, he, he taught in parables and he was giving us this word picture of something. But when he would speak something, I tell you the truth, it was like validated. I'm just telling you, she gave more than all of those people put together. Because she didn't give out of her this abundance pile, and they just gave a portion, but they hung on to it. But she gave it all. And you know, when you think about giving it all, stewardship is about stewardship of life. It's not just about what we tithe or give as offerings. That's a part of it. But stewardship is the way we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And he uses us. Now, I've heard people tell me, say, you know, we don't have any money to tithe, and so we're going to tithe our time. I'm sorry. There's no scripture in there that supports that. You give of your time because the Holy Spirit led you to give of your time. But if you're going to give according to what the scripture teaches about giving of your treasure, that's a different thing. I think God wants to see both function and balance. But there's a lot of folks that will say that, man, I just don't have anything. I can't tell you, and Debbie's in our, my journey as believers, and, you know, I, I can remember when, when the, the first church we were on staff at, and our church was in such dire financial needs. And I know I've told this story, but it fits. They dismissed the entire staff, 67 of us. And so I went home, and I told Debbie, I said, well, I'm, I don't have a job. I'll, go, I'll be working with Dad tomorrow, laying bread. And she was like, well, what? you know, anyway. So we go through. And so for the next months, and we just bought a new house out in the, out in the country. 
And it was going to be our perfect house. We're going to get a horse for the kids and everything. And good thing we didn't have a horse. You know, we might have been. No, I'm not going to go there. Uh, uh, But um, we would come home and go to check the mailbox. And there would be an envelope in there with cash in it that says, Because we love you and care about you, let God use this in your life. I never knew who it was from. But he would just provide. And he provided for us because when I started laying brick, my my salary went down. Insurance went away. All of these different things. And so, but it didn't phase us out of, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? Because within three months, I interviewed with another church in Arkansas. And a month later, I'm on the field with that church in a better setting double the salary. I mean, it's one of those things where you're just like, wow, God, how could you do this? It's because he's God, and he can do what he desires to do, but he's looking for us to walk in obedience so that our life is a living testimony before others. There is no greater powerful when somebody comes up and may you may have conversation, and you get on the the conversation of giving or whatever, and they go, well, we'd like to give, but, man, we just can't afford it. Let me just tell you, you can't afford not to. And you don't give at the end. The Scripture says bring the first fruits into the storehouse. And I've heard people say, well, that's an Old Testament principle. Well, then let's get over in the New Testament. If you want to go ahead and say there's no tithes, then it's offerings in the New Testament. Offerings were above the 10%. I'll take that. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is God is saying, I just want to know where your heart's at. And will you trust me and walk with me and see if I don't? There's very, well, that right there, the scripture says God cannot be tempted. Here's the verse that says, put me to the test. Prove me and see if I won't. Let me just tell you, if he leads you to do that, he will bring provision. In Luke chapter 12, verse 15, let me back up and and read a couple of verses. In 32 and 34, he says, Don't be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give to the poor, provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. And he goes through again, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted. No thief can come near, no moth can destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He said earlier... In Luke chapter 12, then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. I did a funeral yesterday for a lady that I never met. I had an opportunity to meet with her brother. And while I was brought the message and everything, we had a time of people sharing a testimony about the impact that Mary had had on her life. I never knew that lady, but by the end of that service, I knew that lady. Because there were, well, they took longer than my message. And you'd think, okay, that's the last one. And two would stand up. Oh, well, you go first. And everything. And they began to talk about her, her commitment to Christ, her walk with the Lord, how she prayed for people, loved on people, loved the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me just, I, there was a part of me of going like, man, I missed out on not getting to know this lady. But her life was a living testimony. And when you think about that scripture there, a man's life does not consist In the abundance of his possessions, your life consists of what thus saith the Lord and what God wants to do in and through you. And sometimes your obedience in just little ways speaks volumes to other people. Because the people that were sharing testimonies were people she worked with. There was a guy that when she was a younger girl, he had hired her for her first job. And hadn't seen her in a long time. But he had a health issue, went into rehab, and was in a nursing home for months. And he said, who was the first person who came to visit me, pray with me, and read the word with me? It was Mary. And I hadn't seen her for I don't know how long. And she consistently did that. The stewardship of our lives. 
And the more we walk with him, the more we want to honor him. And the more we want to say, yes, Lord. I know it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. There's been so many times when we have walked and, and given in obedience. And we were just like, I don't know how. And the Lord provided, always provided. He doesn't tell you, ask you to do something in the Word of God and then go, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to follow up with that. I'm not going to follow through. In Acts 4, verse 34 through 35, there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. Wow. If you look a little further in Acts chapter 5, there's a story about a couple named Ananias and Sapphira. The church was thriving. It was young. Ananias and Sapphira went and sold some land. They brought the, the money and they laid it at the apostles' feet and said, we sold some land. We're giving it all to you. But the reality was they didn't give it all. They kept a portion but they said, we're giving it all so that people would go, oh, look at their commitment. And so the Holy Spirit impresses on Peter. Peter calls him in. He said, Ananias, tell me, did you sell that land? He goes, I sure did. Did you give all that money to the church? We sure did. He goes, why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> right there, he drops dead. God takes it serious. Four hours later, Sapphira walks in. And he's talking, and he's saying, she's, you know, I haven't seen my husband. I came up here looking for him. Peter's like, did you guys sell some land? Yeah, yeah, we sold land. Did you give it all to the church? Yes, we did. You see those four young men over there? Yeah, they're going to be carrying your body out because they did that for your husband just a little while ago. <laughs> she drops. God takes, serious. And here's the thing. God didn't tell them they had to say they gave it all. They could have said, we sold some land, and here's 10% of it, or here's 5% of it, or here's 50 bucks of it. You know, it didn't matter. But what they did is they lied to the Holy Spirit, and God takes that seriously. And so when we get to give, we give not out of a grudge or out of fear of, of God. We just give out of obedience. And the thing is, the more you give, the more you walk in obedience yeah, the enemy's not going to like it. But the more you will understand the power and authority that you begin to walk in, and you can stand up against the enemy. That's why the scripture says, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some are. But encourage one another, or King James says, spur one another on to love and good deeds. And so much the more as you see the day of Christ approaching. Which means when you and I walk in obedience... And whether anybody knows, and here's the thing, I don't sit down, and I do not go over all of the people that come to this church and say, ooh, they didn't give, they gave, they gave, yeah, ooh, no. I served under a pastor that checked our giving, the staff's giving, every week. And if he thought you were a little off, he'd call you into the office, and he'd say, you know, this is grounds for termination. If you don't tithe. And you're just like, oh my gosh. Never been in that setting before. We tithe. But I was still in the, the I was when I was still kind of in the fear stage. And you want to talk about adding to my fear. Oh my gosh. He's checking up on me all the time. Listen to me. I won't ever check up on you. Holy Spirit does a good enough job of that. But what I want is for you to hear my heart. I want you to be blessed beyond all measure. And the word of God teaches. If we will just trust him. And we will just walk with him. Even when it doesn't make sense. It makes total and complete sense. In the word of God. See if I won't. Bring provision. And it goes into. It's all about our heart. The heart. You know Proverbs 4.23 above all else. Guard your heart, for out of it flow all of the issues of life. All of the issues of life. Stewardship is just a portion of it. But Jesus said, where your heart is, there your treasure. Or where your treasure is, that's where your heart 
is going to be. And sometimes that's the battle in our lives. Man, God, I'm walking with you. I'm doing good. And then something we get could get extravagantly blessed, and we find out, hmm, wow, now what do we do? You just walk in obedience. You just do what, what he asks you to do. And so in, in culminating this, this series back to the basics, this is key. These verses, what the Word of God says is not for him to say, I'm going to put my thumb on you, but it's for him to do this and say, come on, watch me, walk with me, and watch me move. But it's an, it's an element of trust. It goes back to one of those verses that we memorized out of Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6. Many of us know it's trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. My own understanding can get me in trouble. It can cause me to start second-guessing God. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledging him is saying, this is what the word of God says. This is what I'll follow. And he will direct your paths. Some says he'll make your paths straight. So you're not all over. But he's got you walking right down the lane. You know, I've, I hear people misquote. I think it's 1 Timothy 6, verse 10. Well, you know money is the root of all evil. That's not what the Word of God says. It says the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. You remember when Jesus and the rich young ruler came up to him? Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Scripture says Jesus looked at him, had compassion on him. And he said, go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor and come, follow me. And the scripture says the young man turned and went away sad because he was a wealthy young man. We never hear anymore about whether that there was a connection or not. I have to believe in my heart that oftentimes when Jesus would say something to someone, it was, I want to see, will you even take the step of obedience? I think if that young man would have, all right, I'll get on it right now, that the Lord might have gone, you know what? He's going to give everything away, but I'm going to bless him so extravagantly, he'll have more than he ever had before. As we enter into 2022, and I shared this with our staff and with our elders and deacons, I believe God is posturing our church to maybe begin to do, I don't know, there's, I don't have, I can't put my thumb on it, but I believe the church is going to be used to minister to people outside of these walls more than it ever has before. Yeah. You know, in the very beginnings of our country, the people, the politicians even, would come to the pastors and say, this is what we're thinking about, what do you think? During the 1600s, when the Black Plague, the bubonic plague, however you pronounce it, was taking place, and people were dying by the hundreds and thousands, who went into the areas to minister to those people? The church. Oh, you can't go in there. You're going to get it. You're going to get sick. Well, hold on. I'll put my mask on. No. I'm not knocking masks. I'm sorry. Let me retract that. We may get blocked on Facebook after that. I don't know. Yeah. But here's the deal. They went in. They went in and they ministered to people and they didn't die. They were helping people. They were at times carrying out people who had passed away. But they were giving the love and the presence of God and helping people all that they could. And they weren't fearful. Boy, I hope we don't come home with. No, they went in with boldness. Why? Because they were the body of Christ that was called to go and minister. And I believe, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I think 2022 is going to posture the church, not only just Benbrook, but the body of Christ in ways that we will be called on to minister to the world, our world, whether it's right here local or beyond, in ways that we've never done before. And I believe God is posturing us for that. 
And that could be to share the gospel with someone. That could be to give food to someone. That could be to help someone in their financial needs. I but whatever it is, if he leads us to do that, we have to be obedient, folks. We can't step back and go, well, I don't know. We might, you know, it could get tight. You know, the scripture says he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. We'll just tell him, go sell some of your cows and help us out over here. And he will. He's a good, good father. He takes care of his people. And so my challenge to you and to me, to all of us, is let's just... Do what he's called us to do. Yeah. And you may say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm young in my faith. I don't really understand it. Let us help you walk in this. As we move in to 2022 and we start implementing our discipleship training aspect, you're going to be founded, grounded in foundational things that will help you understand, oh, so that's why I need to be walking this. Or that's why I need to be sharing it. That's why I need to be in the Word. That's why I need to be spending time in prayer. To balance it out so that we are a body that are walking and living on the foundation of Jesus Christ. There's no other foundation, the Scripture says, by which we can build upon. And so we build upon that. And we don't fear. I don't fear 2022. I don't know what they're out there. Guess what? He does. He's sovereign, and he already knows. And there's not one thing that will enter into your life or my life that didn't already pass through his hands. And when it passes through his hands and, and, and we begin to receive it, he'll say, now take my hand, and I'll walk you through it. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you alone. Well, that's all I got this morning. I just want you to know. I want us to be a blessed people. And I can pray for you to be blessed and pray for you to be blessed. But the bottom line comes in. You have to step into what God is calling you to do and be as a son or a daughter of the king. With no excuses. No more excuses. Get him out of the way and take him at his word and say, Father, I'm going to trust you. It makes no sense up here to this finite mind. And that's when the Lord goes, well, just look back over in the Old Testament. Remember I said, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. They're above you. Just trust me, walk with me, and watch me work. Let's pray. Father, I believe that in all of this, you're calling your people to obedience. Just to say, yes, Lord, I will do what you've called me to do. And that may apply. There may be the area of stewardship. Man, you got that down. That is not even an issue. But there may be another area in your life that God is saying, you know, you're stellar over here. But this area here, dude, we got to work on that. I need you to submit and surrender some things to me. And confess some things so that I can get that out of you and begin to pour into you life in that area. And so, Father, you already know. And that's why at the very beginning my prayer was that, that people would have hearts to receive your word. It's not what I have to say. This is nothing. All we did was read your scripture. And if someone goes, well, I have an issue with that, then they have an issue with you, Father. Not with me. Because it's your word. And so let us be ones that would take this step. I believe there's probably some in this room that, you're, that would say, you know, I've never tithed. I've always thought, you know, if I've had a little bit left over, I'll give it, you know, to the storehouse or anything. God, I'm challenging some people to get radical in their faith and step out and take you at your word. And, and it, the exciting thing is, God, you're going to blow the doors open in blessing and showing them your goodness and your grace and so father let us as we exit from your church let us be mindful of this God how do you want to use me today because sometimes stewardship is not just throwing something in the, the bucket that goes by but stewardship is going out of your way to help someone it's all encompassed and when we walk in total 
obedience in every area. It's just like, God, we just fit so well with you. And your Holy Spirit moves. And you remind us, thank you for doing Because what did Jesus say? If you offered a cup of cold water in my name, you did it to the least of my children. Lord, I didn't know when we visited you in the prison. If you did it to one of them, you did it for me. I didn't know when I went and visited somebody in the hospital. If you did it to them, you did it for me. Father, we are your hands and feet. Let us be found faithful to walk with you and to be used by you. Let us put you to the test. Let us see, prove you as your word says and watch you do amazing, amazing things in the hearts and lives of people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So t- look at me here. That's basically, if you, if you have a prayer need or something that you need uh, someone to come alongside with you and pray specifically, when we conclude our service, we'll have some of our team up here to pray with you. But I just want to challenge you that, man, this has the opportunity. We have the opportunity to make this the greatest holiday season ever. And so I challenge you to ask the Holy Spirit, is there someone I need to be a blessing to? It could be a family member. It could be somebody you work with. It might even be a total stranger. But I promise you, if you're asking, he'll show you. And then all we get to do is be obedient and walk in it. And so just know we love you. We are praying for God to rain down his blessings upon each and every one of you. If we're walking in a manner of obedience, nothing will hinder that. The blessings will flow. So God bless you. Thanks for being here. Have an awesome day. And if you need a prayer, prayer, we've got people that will be here. And we'd love to have the opportunity to pray with you.